Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly give or take update on the various miniatures I've been getting painted for the channel. This one's a bit of an odd one though because I haven't really painted that many miniatures and a lot of them have just been quite quick. But what I have been painting is a lot of scatter terrain uh, to also mark the return with some of these miniatures I've been painting of Folly Wasteland Warfare to the channel. So I'll mostly be covering stuff for that this time with a little bit of Batman thrown in. And some of the scatter terrain isn't specific to Wasteland Warfare either. But that is mostly what we're looking at. Um, Follow Based on Warfare, I haven't had it on the channel since I think ooh, April last year. Mostly because the survivors that I was running just kept on losing and also whatever treating that Modifius does to the resin makes contrast run quite a bit and I tried a lot of stuff before to make it not happen. Scrubbing them in warm water, soapy water, toothbrush, cold water, everything. The only thing i found that's made a difference is doing it twice. Double hot water uh, with a paintbrush to scrub them, get whatever residue they're treating their resin with off, and then the base coat with contrast will stick, and ideally you don't see much running. It still happens, but not as badly, which has made it more tolerable, but still it's so weird, because I've painted plenty of resin miniatures with contrast, and presumably they are all treated in similar things afterwards, but never had the issue with anything else. But anyway, we'll talk more about that when Fallout Wasteland Warfare returns, probably towards the middle of October to, or the end of, and we're going to be doing the settlement, settlement mode to give it a bit more direction, where the goal is to build up a settlement, survive the wasteland, and to craft your own stories, not just worry about like a team of one faction against the other. I think it's going to be quite fun. But first, let's look at things from the Batman miniature game, and then also one that can be played in both Batman and the DC Universe. First of all, we have the three sons of Batman from The Dark Knight Returns. Not too keen on these, I just don't like the costumes, it's nothing to do with the miniatures themselves. Found them cheap though, and that means I can run a pure Dark Knight Returns list. They're a little odd. Two of them, this guy with the Batarang, like he's really good at throwing Batarangs on par with the Bat family. Hopefully that is in focus, because we had issues with that last time with had because of the scenery stuff I had in the background. Um, He's only defense two. He's really good at throwing batarangs, but he's defense two. And then this gentleman with a shotgun and a pistol, he's got quite good guns for a Batman affiliation crew member, but he's also defense two. So they've, they've got a very obvious weakness. Color wise, I've, I've used the same color amongst all of them, that's why I'm just kind of showing them, and then I can talk about them with the third guy. He's quite an expensive henchman, but he also almost has a sidekick stat line and he's really good at fighting. I think the one with the Batarang might just be him. Also has the minion rule, so you can actually have three of them if you wanted to. But, colours used for all of them. Talisar Blue for the gloves and boots. Classic Batman colours. They're puffy, retro, late 80s, high fashion, sci-fi, whatever. Like what people in the 80s thought uh, fashion would be like in 20 years. Jackets are Ultramarine's blue contrast. Uh, Basilicanum Grey with Agarit Star Shade over the top for their grey trousers as well. Gulliman Flesh for the flesh tones and the Basilicanum Grey for the base as well. So with the three of them, if you use the Frank Miller Batman with one of his upgrades, either the, the Power Armory fights Superman with or the horse, um, the, the Dark Knight Returns Robin and the Dark Knight Returns Green Arrow, all of them together is 350 rep or just under. I think it might be 349. So it's like the perfect size. Six minis. Which is maybe a little on the low side. I think you want to aim for roughly that for a Batman crew. But they all get to use Dark Knight Returns special rule as well. But don't need to talk about that here. So the other thing from the game is Booster Gold. Who comes in a box with Blue Beetle. But not Blue Beetle as is more modernly known. I've forgotten his name but Booster Gold is from the future where everybody can have gear that gives them the equivalent of superpowers. He came back in time so it seems like he's a superhero. But really he's just a dude with technology. But he's fun. I know him mostly from the DC Online MMO, actually. I think he was like, you do a quest line for him. So this is a Yend in yellow, and also Ultramarine's blue, uh, with Agrius or shade over the top. Lots of decent muscle lines on this sculpt, so the, the contrast and the wash sunk in surprisingly well. I'm actually quite happy with how it came out. And like I was mentioning last time, a Yend in yellow is a very hit or miss contrast paint, and I feel like in this instance it hit pretty well. I used Skeletal Horde for his blonde hair with Agri Sword Shade over the top, Gulman Flesh, and it's Moriyan and Yellow for his very tacky looking shades 
and power ring thing there as well. So yeah, he is usable in Batman, he's pretty expensive, but he's probably more usable in the DC Universe game. But he can be used in both. Uh, using superpowered people in the Batman one does... Does, uh... I don't know. It's, it's weird to describe, but it is weird using, like, superpowered people in the Batman miniature game if they're not villains. Because it, it just doesn't seem right. And then you use Batman in the DC game, and it's like, he's just a dude in a suit, so he can't really do anything. But that makes perfect sense. So next, rather than ramble... <laughs> We have a collection of miniatures from Fallout Wasteland Warfare and then a bunch of scatter. Some of it is official and some of it is not. So somewhere along the line I got a second starter set for Fallout Wasteland Warfare. I found somebody selling it super cheap so I just I just was like yeah sure I'll take it. It provides a bunch more super mutants and, and settlers and whatnot so I've started painting those up just because I wanted to get back into it and experiment with trying to clean the resin. So I painted up another settler, did not aim for their official colours because I wanted them to look distinctly different from the one I've already painted from the first starter set I unboxed and whatnot. Ultramines Blue again for his shirt, Skeletal Horde for his shirt he's wearing on his head, whatever it is. Basilicanum Grey for his jeans and for the Wasteland Warfare boxes, or bases rather, to make it look like post-nuclear war ground, I use Snake by Leather with a wash over the top as well and some Wasteland Tuft from Army Painter as well. And for the Mutant Hound, which again is just a sculpt from the starter set, so I painted one of these before and showed it. I think I showed them in, in this series. I think this series existed when I was doing Wasteland War there. So that is the flesh tone that isn't Gulliman Flesh that I never remember the name of. I think it's Dracoth Flesh with the pink contrast for its tongue and then Agrax or Shade over the whole thing. And I used the same flesh tone for a newer box I picked up, which is three mole rats, and then it also comes with six rad roaches, three of which are meant to paint as irra irradiated rad roaches. Still working on them, got one painted, but as far as colours go for these mole rats, did the exact same thing as the hounds. There's not much to them, they're trash enemies. To ease back in, we're going to be fighting these in the first video back to start on a good point, because like I say, my survivors, no matter how I had them equipped, they just kept dying and losing. Well, I don't think they always lost, but they just kept dying. <laughs> they were they were not doing so great. Well, is that in focus? I think it is. And again, this is Wasteland Tufts from Army Painters Tufts line. T-U-F-T-S. In case my accent is disguising what I'm trying to say there. There's the last one as well. So that's the three. You only get three more rats in the, the box but you get six rad roach bases which are just horrible things i kind of regret painting them as dark as i did i used wildwood contrast paint which is the darker brown i did dry brush some mornfine brown over the top but i don't think it made enough of a difference for light catching on them also i see a bit i missed there as well but uh, i struggled with these having contrast seep into the spaces because of the the resin issue even after cleaning them basilicum gray for the rocks and snake bite leather for the the irradiated base of the wasteland. So on to the terrain. We'll start with the unofficial stuff, which is the barrels at the back. Um, I just I got a bunch of these. I've got tons of them not painted yet. It's super cheap off of Etsy. Done on a sadly not super high quality 3D printer. Like from a distance, you probably can't tell. Get up close, you'll definitely see the filament lines. I painted these just to be like generic. How I usually paint these barrels, which is Flesh Terror Red Contrast with Agrax Earthshade and a little bit of Nurgle's Rot to show slime. So that's just kind of like, that's just generic, you can see this in Batman, Crisis Protocol, whatever. And there's plenty more where that came from. But then these, I painted in the official, well, you know, the colours you would normally see for irradiated barrels of toxic goo in any Fallout game. New Vegas 4, 76, etc. So that is Griffhound Orange, just the, the base coating of Grey Seer, wash over everything, and a lot of Nurgle's Rot as well. So like I say, if you get them close you can see the filament lines, but from a distance I think it's fine. And I, I like that it sets the scene better as well. They're the right size for Wasteland Warfare scale. Maybe a little large for Batman, but only a little, not enough that I think it's super distracting. And then we have official Modifius Fallout themed scatter terrain that I've painted to the best of my ability like they appear in the more recent games. So we've got a trash bin, painted in Militarum Green, 
Also, aggregates are shade over everything because they all have to look horrible because there's been a nuclear apocalypse. They built your silver as well. So we've got ourselves a trash bin. We've got ourselves a couple of drawers that you see in quite a few buildings in Fallout 4. They're, they come in two colours, but I settled for this one just to be uh, easy. We've got ourselves a generic looking safe, which is just light belt your silver with a wash over it, super simple. A fridge, Fallout themed fridge, just the base coat with a little bit of wash to make it look darker in places around the base. And light belt your silver for the, the, I can't remember what that's called at the back of fridges. I think it has a specific name. I'm blanking, no, don't remember. But that's a nice bit of chonky. And a lot of this scattered terrain, yes, it's Fallout themed, but stuff like this, it could just look like a discarded fridge for Batman scattered terrain, which is another reason why I painted up. This, on the other hand, not so much. It's a Nuka Cola vending machine. You actually get three of these. And you can have the door hanging off, you can have the, this back bit coming off, so you can have a few of them in like various states of disrepair. That is uh, Blood Angel's red contrast. That's just the, the base grey sear. A little bit of black templar black as well and wash over it as previously said and a little bit of lead belcher silver as well two terminals done in the fallout style let's see if i can get them both in focus since this is going to be a challenge <laughs> that is a challenge honestly mm, almost oh yeah there we go try to do a little bit of green on it with nurgling green rather than that just lead belcher silver they can sit on tables or wherever you want speaking of Last little bit, Fallout themed horrible looking wood table. Wildwood, because of this being a flat surface, I really struggled with the, the contrast not working correctly. So I did a more fine brown streaking over it while it was wet. I actually think it came out with a more wood effect than it would have, so I'm not too fussed with it. Lay about your silver for the drawers, and again, a wash over the top, like that, simple as. So that's just gonna set the scene a bit better when we bring back Wasteland Warfare to the channel. On that note, here's a hint for something else that might be coming down the line as well. That right there. It's nothing lewd. But as a little hint for what might be coming. And that is it. So there's not as much to show because of the focusing on the scar terrain. If you'd like to show me what you've been painting for any miniature games you've been uh, collecting, amassing your grey piles of shame and have started painting through, feel free to show me on Twitter at GamerEND. I like seeing miniatures painted, even if they're from games I don't cover. No problem with that at all. Next time, there's more Batman on the table. I'm working through Riddler Thugs at the moment to expand the Riddler crew we have available. Definitely more Wasteland Warfare, more Scattered Terrain, I think. And there is some new releases for Crisis Protocol arriving later in the month. I think that's about it. I still have Final Nemesis to do for the Resident Evil 3 board game playthrough as well. So still a bit of an eclectic mix as always, but that's the way I like it, honestly. And as, there might be more barrels in the future as well, because I've got tons of them unpainted. I got so many of them for like five pounds. It was a good deal. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. Go get yourself painted. It's fun. It's relaxing. Show me as well if you want. Thank you for watching this, and hopefully you'll look forward to the return of Wasteland Warfare if you, if you missed it. Until next time, ta-ta for now.